Guys, welcome back. During my projects, there are quite a lot of tools that I'm using. Uh, and I thought it would be fun to show my tools and machines and uh, yeah, tell something about uh, everything in my workshop. So this is going to uh, be a small video series, a short video series. Uh, and in each episode, I will talk about some of the tools that I have. And in this first one, I'm going to talk about my small import lathe. Um, it is quite a nice lathe, but it also has some issues that I had to address in order to um, use it like uh, how I wanted it to. So there are a couple of things I want to talk about in this video. The first one is the chuck. This is not a chuck that came with the machine because it came with a standard free jaw chuck. And well, I bought a new one. I also bought a um, four jaw chuck. The second thing I want to talk about is the um, tool holder setup. setup. And uh, I also removed the uh, compound from the slate because it was uh, way too flexible. And last but not least, uh, the tailstock, uh, I also changed a couple of things about it. And um, these changes made it easier to uh, operate the machine and made it more convenient. So these are the things I want to talk about. The first item is the chuck. At the moment, I have a uh, colored chuck uh, installed on the machine. And that's for a good reason, because most of the uh, things I make on the lathe are in small diameter. And um, it's just convenient to have it uh, locked down in a collet instead of a free jaw or a four jaw chuck. Um, usually the four jaw, ch uh, the, I mean the free jaw chuck is also convenient, but the one that came with the machine um, was re in really bad condi condition. So it had quite a bit of run out. So that's why I chose this one. And um, in 90% of the time, I have this one installed on the machine. So these are the other two uh, chucks I have with the machine. Um, the original free jaw chuck that I talked about and a new aftermarket uh, four jaw chuck. And I bought the other ones, the color chuck and the four jaw, because the original one uh, was really out of spec. It had a lot of run out and um, well, I do not remove the uh, workpiece a lot from the machine uh, to do other uh, operations on it before I put it back. But still, um, it was not usable. The free jar chuck that originally came with the machine uh, had quite a lot of run out. And that is the reason why, especially in the beginning that I had the machine, uh, I didn't really use it because the parts that I made on it were not to the uh, specifications that I wanted it to. So that's why I, I bought the color chuck. And since that, uh, since that one was installed, I used the lathe quite a lot. The next two things I want to talk about are the tool holder and uh, the compound. Well, the absence of the compound because I removed it. And there's quite a good reason for that. Um, in a minute, I can show you the uh, compound itself and the problem I had with it, and that's why I re uh, replaced it with this block of aluminium, is that it was um, flexible and especially had quite a lot of play in it. Um, that made it so that uh, when you try to make a little bit more aggressive cut, that the entire thing would bend and the tool would uh, be bent way below the optimal cutting height in, in the workpiece when you're cutting. So I saw a video from uh, Robin Ranzetti and uh, he made a fixed tool post holder and also removed the compound from his lathe. And he was really happy with it. So I thought it would be a nice idea to try it on my own lathe. I know it's 
a bit too small, the block, but that's with good reason. It's simply the only piece I had available at the time, and I just wanted to have a proof of concept before I uh, would buy additional uh, materials to build the final product. Um, I also have some recordings uh, when I built it, and I also can make a small video, short video, where, where I can show you how I made um, this replacement for the compound. The second piece I changed is the tool holder. This is a quick change tool holder. Uh, or originally, the lathe comes with a fixed tool holder. Um, and for workflow, I really didn't like it because everyone, every time you want to change the tool or make a different type of cut, you are required to remove it. And well, as I said, I, I don't like that. So this is the compound I removed from the machine. Um, the reason for uh, that is really simple, um, but there are a couple of it. The first one is that when I have it mounted, um, there is quite a long leverage from the uh, position of the cutter to the center point where it is attached. It is attached here in the middle. And um, when I have the um, tool post installed, the cutter itself is all the way over here. And on a small machine like this, such a long lever is just way too much. And when you make a small cut, it, it already begins to bend. Uh, the second reason is that um, when you want to use the, uh, the slide itself from the uh, compound, um, there's quite a lot of play in it. It's not machined to such a degree of tolerance that when you uh, loosen the bolts just a bit to get it to moving, um, that there is no play. And that just made it uh, a lot worse to use it. So those are the, the main reasons why I uh, decided to remove it and go with this uh, fixed uh, tool post. And the tool posts themselves, uh, the uh, tool holders in this case, not, nothing too special about them. They're just uh, standard uh, cheap uh, tool holders for the uh, tool post. So the next thing I want to discuss is the tailstock. Um, I made a couple of changes to it, but not too much. Um, I mostly changed the tools that I use in the tailstock. But one thing I did change is the way it is fixed to the lathe itself. Originally, it came with just a uh, M8 size bolt that was placed here in the middle. And it was quite an awkward position, uh, especially if you want to change the position of the tailstock um, a couple of times during a simple operation. And because it does not have uh, too much travel in the uh, tailstock itself, you are required to move it around quite a bit. So that's why I uh, removed the original M8 bolt and replaced it with a um, toggle clamp. These are really cheap and easy to get from eBay. And um, it, it's quite uh, firmly uh, fixed to the machine now. And by just lifting the clamp, I can now move it around and lock it in place again. Um, so that really helps with productivity. And I will now show you the uh, main tools I use uh, in the tailstock. So these are the main um, accessories and tool holders I use in the tailstock. Um, originally, it came with this standard uh, drill chuck. And well, it worked just fine, but if you want to um, change um, drills or taps a couple of times during an operation, especially if you want to make a couple of parts, it's, um, well, it's not really a problem, but I, I, again, I, I like it when it's convenient. So I bought a couple of uh, more Staper two collet holders. I already had uh, a couple of um, um, ER20 
uh, college for my uh, CNC mill. So it was uh, really easy to use it uh, with these uh, tool holders. So now if I start a project, I just load up these tool holders with the tools I need. And then I can just uh, qu quickly swap them, swap them around in the uh, tool holder. Uh, I mean in the uh, till stock. And last, I have a, um, well, as everyone should have with a um, uh, till stock, a life center for the longer parts. So these are some of the tools that I use on my lathe. Um, from right to left, um, I bought these tools. These are uh, braced, in, uh, braced carbide tools. Um, I bought these with the machine and it worked all right for a while, but the pro main problem I have with it is that I do not have the right equipment to sharpen them again. Um, after that, I bought these uh, HSS um, tools. They are really nice. I use them um, even today quite regularly, but the main part of the turning I do, I do with these uh, insert tools. They are convenient, they are uh, correctly sharpened and shaped. And as I said, for the, uh, for the other tools, I do not have a nice uh, tool grinder. So for these, I do not need them. So, so that's why I uh, use them a lot. So this is the lathe I use for my uh, projects. Um, it's a simple lathe. It's really aimed at beginners and people that just want to try out um, some metal turning. Um, I can still recommend it, but you do need to take into account that it does have a couple of flaws and um, that if you want to use it more often or if you want to turn larger parts, that you may want to look at a, another machine that has some higher quality standard that has a stronger motor and is just a better machine overall. Um, as I said a couple of minutes ago in the video, I did make uh, a replacement part for the compound. And I can show in another video uh, how I made it. And I can also show you how I will make the uh, final part for it. Um, if you would like to see that, please leave a comment so I know that you guys would like to see it. Um, so that's it for this part and this machine. Um, in the next part of this uh, short video series, I will sh uh, tell you a bit about uh, my CNC mill that's standing right next to it. Uh, I made it myself and as with every machine that you make yourself, there are a couple of things that went really well and also a lot of things that you would make uh, a lot different, uh, that you would approach differently uh, if you would make it uh, with the knowledge you have at this point. Um, but more about that in the next video. Thanks for watching.